engines revved, and men inside the building took up fighting positions around the top perimeter of the bay, up on the overhead catwalks. Before anyone could speak, a machine gun opened fire in a roof turret, then tracer fire rained down from the catwalks above. The entire garage space was lit with a dizzying strobe of muzzle flashes and tracer fire. As the doors continued to crank open, streams of infected raced through the bottom. The bodies were torn apart as they crossed paths with the gunfire. Still, the doors kept opening, and the infected continued to swarm. Kate began frantically screaming in the passenger seat, seeing the infected fill the garage and run directly at the MRAP. Luke looked back over his shoulder at Weaver. Without having to speak the order, the man reached up and snatched the girl back into the crew compartment with one arm. Before the heavy MRAP rolled forward, Weaver was seated up front. Luke followed close to the lined up vehicles. One, two, three, four passed through the open bay, the only light being the menacing strobes of muzzle flashes. Luke gripped the wheel as he approached the opening, waiting for his turn in the breach. On the outside, Luke spotted two of the heavy CB dozers covered in plate steel with large spotlights shining down on the packs of infected. He couldn't see the operators through the clumps of infected grabbing onto the sides of the dozer as it spun left and right, snagging primals and pulling them down into the tracks, throwing off unrecognizable mush from the rear treads. The overhead door screeched at the top and began to roll down as Luke approached it. Suddenly he realized his eyes had been focused on the outside. He looked back at the vehicle bay and wished he hadn't. The garage around them was a nightmare of bloodied and screaming bodies, but as bad as it was inside, it was worse beyond the doors. Holy gates of hell, what are we doing out here? Weaver said. You've been out of the wire before? I take it this is different? Weaver shook his head and placed his palms on the dash to his front. I've seen nothing like this, brother. I heard the horde had us surrounded, but holy hell, nothing like this when we came back this afternoon. Luke willed the MRAP forward, mentally gluing himself to the armored Humvee to his front. Fire pots of diesel exploded off to their right, casting a bright glow across the night sky. Bits of sticky flame and bodies fell from the sky, striking the armored vehicles in the convoy. Then the wall to the right of them erupted in gunfire, with even more riflemen joining the fight from the rooftops of the complex. He dared a look over his left shoulder and could see Marines standing shoulder to shoulder, firing into the mobs of infected, tracers sipping all around them. A shirtless infected man climbed onto the hood of the MRAP and looked inside, his mouth grotesquely wide, screaming at the occupants. Rounds pinged off the sides of the MRAP, and the man's chest and head exploded, the body rolling off the side. The vehicles in the convoy went boot-heavy, picking up speed as they lurched forward. As Luke crunched over the masses of bodies, the wheel shuddered in his hands. The convoy wended down a raised road, then turned headed around the perimeter road that circled the factory. Luke looked across at Weaver. This is it. This is the distraction. Luke slammed down the pedal and cut the wheel hard into the wall of infected on their left, driving through a sea of bodies. Screams and grinding from under the wheels shuddered through the armor until the wheels finally found a purchase on a paved road. Luke leaned in, his face against the glass, squinting to see out as he white-knuckled the wheel, fighting through the mob. Slowly, as he gained separation on the camp, the hordes thinned out and eventually turned to nothing. Luke stopped the MRAP and pushed back into the seat, his body still shaking. His clothing was soaked with sweat. He was panting and thirsty. He turned his head and stared into the large rearview mirror on the driver's side that somehow managed to stay attached during the escape. Camp Alamo behind them was blanketed in a storm of explosive flashes and tracer fire. They are dead if we can't stop the jamming, he said without turning his head. If they don't get help, they'll all die. Then let's go get Sergeant Giles and get it done, Tucker said quietly from the back. Luke shook his head, not speaking, his eyes still locked on the mirror as he watched the base fighting for its life. He knew it had to be done, even if he didn't want to say it out loud. Weaver pulled the scrap of paper from his shirt pocket and compared it with the tactical map taped to the console. Using a grease pencil, the soldier circled a new destination. I'm sure guys will be okay for a bit longer. He pointed his hand to the west. Let's knock out this tower, boys. The Marines need us to bail them out. <laughs>